Hey. People Station V103, the ATL's number one for hip-hop and R&B. Lil Nas X is in the studio. Man, all this time we've been waiting, bro. Congratulations, first of I all. I know. Thank you. I'm I here. like your suit. It's like really... Uh, yeah, that's a little something. <laughs> little shum shum. Yeah, so, uh. so man, you know, um, as soon as, you know, you came out with the song, before it started getting really, really big... Our um, assistant producer, Kalia, told us, like, he from here. <laughs> yeah. He went to school with me. I know him. And I was like, you don't know him. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> and it turns out, like, you are from Atlanta. That's all right. Yeah, you know, this is hometown, city. We got hometown. so much. We got so I much know, to ask. a lot so, of questions. Let me ask you a question. Does it feel like home when you come home? Does it feel like home? Yeah. Yeah, my family's here. Yeah, do you do you now that you got the superstar status? Are you still like going back home to stay at home, or are you staying in in the Ritz Carlton or something? Now? <laughs> nah, I mean, I'm not I'm not staying in the Ritz Carlton, but you know, I'm not going back home because nah. it's too much, too much, too much stuff. <laughs> oh, stuff. What you mean, too much stuff? Uh, I just mean like you know the the house is packed, you know. Oh. Yeah. Got your full house. It's not the same anymore. Yeah. There things, you go. things won't be the same no yeah. more. Yeah. Yeah, things won't be the same, man. It's a whole new level I level know. now. How is fame for you? How are you dealing with it? Did you love it? Is it what you thought it would be? Fame is cool. It's uh it's nothing too crazy. Yeah. You still feel like you can do normal things, go to the mall or not? Uh sometimes. Sometimes definitely. I mean, cuz you know, a lot of people are getting used to just a regular face so mm-hmm. like if i don't have on the hat then i'm good like a lot of the times <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you a question the the whole thing with the with with the outfit that goes along with the persona of the song mm. mm-hmm. is that just for this song so now that we're moving into the next phase of Lil Nas X are we gonna see something face. different uh not necessarily but it was definitely a part of it I mean like you know I'm still gonna rock it from time to time but it's just not like an every single day thing, you know? Okay. So I, I, I just want to tell you, when when I realized, I said, okay, this this young man is out of here, is when the video posted of you at like an elementary school. Mm-hmm. That video of you at the elementary school and when you came out and all the kids in the front <laughs> of all nationalities, right, including them little white kids was doing their little, you know, their little dances. And I was like, okay, this kid is out of here. Mm-hmm. That song is bananas. Did, Thank you, man. Did, Thank did you, you so much. Did you know? What did, what did you think then? What did I think? Yeah, because you, you, were, you were like at the elementary school. Oh, what, what was I thinking? Uh, it was just like, I don't know. I was like, oh, I cannot hear myself. Oh. So I, was trying to, <laughs> I was trying to like hear the beat playing from the back. So I'm all off beat, you know. Yeah. I'm trying oh, to catch no. up with them. But it was dope. It was dope. You chill, You are so chill about the whole experience. Yeah. And literally one of my favorite tweets was, I think, earlier this year. You were like, yo, less than a year ago, I was sleeping at my sister's. I, right. I was had no food. I had no money. And boom, here you are. The whole world knows who you are. Yeah. What's keeping you so grounded about the situation? What's keeping me so grounded? I don't know. Just like knowing, knowing how like the music industry works and, you know, just, you know, knowing that everything can be gone in a second so you just mm. appreciate every moment you get right uh and you just keep pushing for the best yeah so was music always your intention then because i know you started out doing comedy comedy videos no but that that wasn't my uh like plans for success either but um music came along literally like last year i mean it's something i've always like loved and like love listening to music by so many different artists but i never saw myself doing it Mm. But once I started to do it, I realized how much I loved it. So, you know, I put my all into it and then, you know, did what I did. And Quiet has kept you, you know music. So you played the trumpet, right? Yes. And then you got in the first chair, (laughs) which is difficult to do, which means that you were the best trumpet player. Right. Yes. You know what I mean? So you are musically back. So just getting into music, it wasn't like foreign to you. You understood it. And, and you just man did something that was incredible that will go down in history like for the rest of the generations to come you are ingrained in history with with that song old town road and it's so interesting that you bring up the trumpet because you said you stopped playing because you didn't feel cool 
Like, at what point did you stop caring about what people think? Because it seems like now you're just, you know, dancing to the beat of your own drum. What point? Hmm, maybe literally, like, as, as when I started doing music. So, like, last year, I guess. Um, and I just started to do, I guess, pretty much whatever I felt. Mm. Like, you know, at that point. You know. So, we got a lot to talk about. So we're gonna we're gonna pause and start our interview from the top because we threw a barrage of questions for you in the Come beginning. On, they were like intro questions, but really, who is Lil Nas X? Because I know everybody is saying to themselves, "Who is this boy who puts out a song seemingly out of nowhere? The song does so well that it breaks the Billboard all-time music record for the most weeks at number one." Crazy. Mm. Who is Little Nas X? Who is Little Nas X? Uh, I don't know how to answer this. What do you what do you what do you want me to say? Ooh. Like, who are you? Like, what what built you? We can we can me. read your Wikipedia. I mean, he yeah he said he you said you built you yeah. Um, <laughs> 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 I am a social media kid who I don't know uh, found his way into the music industry and things just went right they went very right so for <laughs> so one of the benefits that we have on V103 is we have a wide range listening audience so mm -hmm. we have from 5 to 50 so the younger generation understands what you just said because to the younger generation it's everything is at their fingertips for sure. at that keyboard the world is theirs. To the older generations, there is a process to get to where you got to. That process for the older generation, they were like, wait a minute. Like, you just all of a sudden one day said, I'm going to make a rap record. And then, boom, it happened. Mm, not necessarily. Okay, take us through it. Um... Wait, uh, like, like, what, like, what exactly? What do you? What so, okay, so you're at your computer, and at first, you are a social media person. Yeah. What were you doing in social media? Just like you know, posting memes and stuff, just like joking around on the internet, pretty much. And then that joking around took you to how many viewers? The joking around took me to like, like a couple thousand of followers. Okay. You know? And um, from there, I started to make music last year. And then okay, you skipping the part like but, you 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 doing so much that that you have like a lot of viewers, not just a couple thousand. It's like you are getting huge with this persona online of who you are. What did you still have the same name back then when you were doing the memes on online? Would you would, was there another? Nah, I was just like a bunch of different names, you know, different pages, you know. Of stuff, okay. different groups of people following me. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know how to do this. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's okay. We're we're explaining it right here. So let me ask you this. So, were you an introvert? Like you stayed home a lot on the computer? Because you know sometimes when when we see people that do that, they're like locked in their room at their computer. How much time did you spend on your computer every day? Probably like in high school, every time that I wasn't like at school with friends or something, I'll probably just be in the house on my phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just doing it. Yep. Just tapping. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So then, so then what made you decide to do a record? That made me to just decide. I mean, and, because and was the record, was it something that you did for entertainment purposes and you didn't know what you had created? Or was it something that you plan on doing? Like, I, I did you wake up one day and say, I'm going to make a country record. It's going to be the number one country record in the world. No, I started to do music. And okay. like when I first started, it was just like I was just bored leaving school for the summer. So I put a song up on my Twitter account. OK. And then, um, you know, like my father was like, hey, uh, we like this fire or whatever so i was like cool and i just started to like do it like almost like every every other week or something put a song up and okay. then um 
around like my fifth song i was like uh oh okay i really like doing this i really feel like this is something i could you know thrive in pretty much so around my 13th song which was the song that blew up uh i was just like okay i gotta make something where it's gonna get you know some kind of attention you know mm. uh I didn't know it was going to get that much attention, but it, it did. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> did, you, did you, and and I'm going to ask you one question. We're going to go to a traffic break. Did you, when you started going from being the person that's putting memes up on social media to started making music, did you build a studio in your house? Actually, actually I did, you know, for the first couple of songs, um, me and my brother who would like build studios in my grandma's closet <laughs> uh, and that's what we use for like most of my songs at first you nice. use your grandmama's closet yeah but then like once i got around to you know old town road like which blew up you know i was like this song has potential i was like uh it can't just be like any studio in okay. home kind of thing so i went to like the best quality affordable studio i could go to at the time where'd you go uh I can't think of the actual name of the studio, but, you know, I know I was with this engineer named Cinco, and, you know, he put it together and put the song out the same night. Yeah, I didn't even, I didn't even get it mixed because I, I didn't have the money. The but, song wasn't even mixed wow. when it came out? It's still, it's still not mixed. Get like out of here. Crazy. Now it's that's... Not mixed. Wow. How much did you pay for studio time? <laughs> $20. Oh. Jesus. Okay. Took a minute to get that 20 though. <laughs> okay we are here um dissecting this guy who has uh taken the world by storm with a song that he didn't even know was going to be as big as it is and it does and, and here's the interesting thing um the reason why i asked you those questions is because there are so many of you in atlanta kids that have these aspirations and people are saying, okay, you're crazy. It ain't going to happen. You're not going to be able to do it. Did you have those type of people that were kind of like naysayers or you were just so under the radar that nobody even paid attention? Uh, You know, I did have a couple of people, uh, but it was mostly, you know, online. Mm. Uh, a few in real life, too, but they didn't exactly say those exact words. Okay. But, you know... They all came around. Who was your biggest <laughs> encouragement? My biggest encouragement? Uh, definitely had to be my brother. My brother, um, you know, because he, before he went off into the military, like October before the song came out, he, uh, like, we, went, we built studios and stuff together, you know, found beats, and, you know, he spent his money on equipment and stuff and everything. And always like, like you know, just told me like you know when he was liking something, and when he wasn't liking something, just being like 100 with it. Yeah. Uh, you know, and my dad always like making sure everything's like cool. Like even when I'm not out of school, making sure my phone bills paid, mm -hmm. and you know I have somewhere to sleep, even if he's you know a little questioning about what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, because life, life, life takes that toll, right? So you went to you you got out of high school. You went to was it Georgia Southern? I went to the University of West Georgia. West Georgia, okay. Yes. And and you didn't stay long. I stayed for a year, and that was it. And why why'd you leave? Um, well, honestly, what happened was what had happened was <laughs> 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 no, like uh, that year. Uh, I'm so used to everything just coming so easy. So, like, for my math class, I kind of was just, like, you know, just messing around for the first half of the year. And then, like, you realize you only get so many assignments. So, if your grade is already down, you have to bring it all the way back up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I wasn't able to do that. So, that summer, I was supposed to uh, take, like, a summer online class for math. Yeah. Pretty much. And that's kind of how, like, it, like, I had got... I was like, I'm gonna get to this next week, and I was like listening to beats on YouTube to make something for Twitter, and then um, that's kind of how 
I got into music in a way. But you know, so I want to I want to um, pick up the phone real quick because one of the interesting things was there was a uh, social media post um, by a woman named Nicole Oliver, and Nicole Oliver uh, is the web design teacher at Lithia Springs High School, mm-hmm. and she says I've had many students tell me that they were going to make money with their music. My former student Montero has proven that this is why teachers and parents should never crush someone's dreams and ideas. And on the phone is your former teacher, Nicole. Good morning, Nicole. Good morning. You have him on the phone so you could tell him directly. Hello, how are you? Hello, I'm great. (laughs) What about yourself? I'm great. Um, I just wanna let you know I'm so proud of you. And um, along with all of your other teachers that were at um, Lithia Springs, um, like Miss Giles, I just spoke to her yesterday. I know you stay oh, really? in contact with her. <laughs> yeah, we yes. still talk. Yes, but we're really proud of you. I'm, I'm very proud of you. And I have to tell you that um, now I teach television production at um, the College and Career Institute. But um, you've made a change in my life because mm. um, it changes the way that I do things. Because a lot of times as teachers, we have people say, I'm going to be a basketball player. I'm going to make music. I'm going to do this. And, you know, we always steer them down the path of college. College, you must go to college. But sometimes we have to break free from the those limitations and um, societal expectations and do what we want to do. And um, I'm really proud of you for that. Uh, you went out on a limb um, and did what you wanted to do, took a chance. So that makes me proud. Thank you so much. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's true, though. You know, people can do, you know, whatever they want if they really, truly believe that they're able to do it, you know. And uh uh-huh. I'm, I'm glad that your attitude changed on that. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, Nicole, thank you. Thank you. And thank you for being an inspiration and such a great teacher. And to all the teachers over at Lithia Springs High School. Thank you. All right. Have a good day. Nice to talk to you, Montero. Nice to talk to you, too. <laughs> Ooh, <gummy name. laughs> there you go. How, how does that make you feel? Name anyway. How does that make you feel when, you when, feel when a former teacher says that about you? It makes me feel great, you know. Uh, just having somebody who you know saw me before everything, right? Saying great things, you know. So I want to jump to another thing that you actually are now in the forefront of as well, and that is the conversation that many people wondered why you're at the top of the world. Your song is number one on the Billboard charts. And people are wondering whether or not you are going to break these records from Despacito to Mariah Carey to Boyz II Is he going to break this record? And in the midst of that, on the cusp of whether you're going to break the record, you come out and say, I'm gay. And everybody's like, wait a minute. Like, what was that kind of conversation like? Who did you tell? Who did you have a talk with? about doing that because I'm sure as I, as I see you walk in the studio, you got an entourage of people with you. Who did you have that conversation with before you decided to take that leap? Uh, I mean, I guess I talked to a couple people like indirectly, uh, but I didn't tell anybody like the day of or anything. I was just like hopped on Twitter. And it was just like something, something just, you know, say, I guess, you know, so people won't be expecting anything. You know, I'm just pop up at a war show with a dude or something like wait what's going on (laughs) (laughs) yeah okay and 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 i'm gonna throw to jade and jr because they're gonna chime in on this and my question is when you when you did it one of the other interviews that i saw when, when you were with kevin hart and them oh the shop they were basically asking you like um why did you wait so long to do it and you started talking about the pressure especially from being in the hood. Explain that to our listeners that are listening now. Uh, Wait, say that one more time. When you were on the shop. Yeah, the, and, ending, the ending of what you just right, said. Right, the ending. Basically, they asked you, like, why you waited so long. And you were like, you know, there were certain fears and stereotypes, especially in the hood and the Stigmas. black community, about being gay and what that meant. Mm-hmm. 
So there are a lot of people that are listening right now that are in your shoes that want to come out, but they are fearful. Explain that. I mean, you know, like, honestly, like, you know, growing up, like, nobody can lie. It's like, it's like a joke almost. It's mm-hmm. like a joke. It's like Being gay is a joke? Yeah, it's, it's a joke. And it's like, everything's gay. It's like, oh, oh, why you do that? That's gay. You feel me? Like, right. stuff like that. So, right. and like, for people who do, I mean, I, I just want them, I guess, to be in a good place in their life and not like with somebody or like family or friends or something who's going to like disown them or something just like so you feel comfortable wherever you at Mm -hmm. because i'm in a place where i don't i don't i don't i don't have to depend on anyone anymore pretty much okay Mm -hmm. so you know yeah was the response what you expected? Because I feel like in 2019, a lot of people don't care what somebody else's sexual orientation is. Right. You put it on Front Street, and it certainly helped break that stigma. But was the response what you thought, or you think people would come down on you a little bit more difficult in regards to supporting you? I mean, I guess I got the expected response. I mean, you know, mostly support. Of course, it's going to be like a couple folks just like you know talking i mean it still is Mm. at this point yeah and like making it about every single thing like you know oh that's what he meant by the horses and like stuff like that i'm like (laughs) oh my god um (laughs) uh yeah can 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 i tell you interesting enough so so nina has a younger son i have a younger son that's your age and nina's son's at georgia my son's at lsu you know, all my kids are like your same age. Yes. And all of them said the same thing. You know what they said? What did they say? Ask him if he is really gay or he's just saying he's gay. I'm just saying. I just like. <laughs> <laughs> See? Because everybody, because they yeah, all said to me, thing. they all said he's a jokester on Twitter. Yeah, he I has am. said things before on Twitter that he didn't mean. He has done things to get the, you know, like you're an expert on social media. We addressed that in the beginning. Yes. So the question is to that generation that is your age that does not believe you. I mean, what y'all want me to do? Like, uh, kiss somebody or something? <laughs> uh, kiss them. No. No, <laughs> no. I'm just saying. <laughs> no. I mean, I mean, because a lot of people, like, still, like, say that. Like, like oh, like, he's joking or, or he's, like, doing it for clout or something. It's mm-hmm. like, it's like, no. It's like, it's not something you do for clout. Like, <laughs> um, yeah, but it's, the rumors are true. When did you know? When did I know? That you were gay. Uh... <laughs> this reminds me of a meme. Um, <laughs> probably like I don't know when I was like real young, maybe. Okay. And when when you were going on your journey, like in high school, did you date girls because it was the the right thing to do? Um, uh, yeah, I I dated not not necessarily, but I have dated girls. I have had like you know feelings for some girls, but like it was never like a. Um, I guess what like a love kind of feeling. I guess right. it's like a hmm. I don't. Uh, I don't. You didn't reject me. Um, I like you kind of thing. I don't know. Okay. You didn't feel pressure with those relationships. Yeah, and it was like I nothing that ever got like too serious. Jade, got you. I mean, <laughs> yes. I. I have music questions personally i don't know if y'all ready to switch gears but i'm no, very not, much not intrigued not so yet. keep it moving because i i, I want to go to the music i i think what we're gonna do is um i want to play this song and when when the old town road came out and they decided who made the decision to put billy ray on the song with you me hey are you serious really yeah i really did how did that come about um, I mean, I literally like two days after I put the song out in December. Like, I was like tweeting like, "Uh, oh, you know, help me get Billy Ray Cyrus on this or whatever." But you know, until I got with Columbia, I wasn't able to get in contact with him. Mm. And it, the reason why that's incredible is because of your age and his age, right? And how you would know to call him. How do, you know? You know what I mean? Like, 
that yeah. was just magical. Look, so here's my question for you, bro. Because you've literally had a lifetime's worth of successes in a year. You know, you've had Kim Kardashian tweet. Even Mariah Carey, whose record you broke, was asking for another remix that of remix. Old Town Road, you know. So for you, what was the most memorable moment, the most impactful moment in, in your career so far that you felt like, wow, I've made it? Hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, probably, probably, probably the moment that I did break the record. Mm. Yeah. What were you doing when you got the news? I was, uh, I was at a restaurant eating some like fruit with like the, the, the uh, the seasoning. Oh, that, like the cayenne pepper. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, you fancy. Like, I was like, wow, this is good. <laughs> And I was like, you know, I just broke the record. It was like, it's real now, you know? Yeah, and then you ate your fruit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. <laughs> Bro, Time Magazine basically said you're one of the most influential people online. Like, everybody plays with their phone. There's people on Twitter and Instagram who wish they were in your shoes right now. Yeah. And, and just everything that you created in a year what makes your approach to social media different than some dude who's in the closet right now just like yeah i want to i want to do beating <laughs> Lil Nas X. what did you do that's different um i studied the internet um i paid attention to you know current current events and everything going on in the world and uh i learned how to cater to different audiences and uh yeah, I was funny with it. Amazing, dude. Amazing. We got something for you. We didn't get a chance to celebrate your number one success. We were wishing we did. And as we were sitting there thinking of celebrating, half of us was like, well, let's pop some champagne. And then was like, he ain't uh, old he's enough. He's 20. I know I was sad about that. Even though I... <laughs> okay. I mean, we just... I just went. Uh, 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 don't you get us in trouble. We on the radio. Wait till we turn the radio off. Yeah, so we we, we, <laughs> we we just had a cake made for you. We just want to say a big congratulations. He is in the studio, ladies and gentlemen. Lil Nas X is here. And you're in Atlanta. Hey. And, of course, because you're in Atlanta, there's only there's only uh, one. Hey. Yeah, you, you got to have the, you know, cocoa caramel cake. That's, you know. Classic Cocoa Atlanta caramel. right there. Cocoa Cake. So, yeah, man, he he's, he is that dude, you know. So uh, we just wanted to say congratulations yeah, and, and thank, thank you, so bro. Thank you so much. Thank this cake is God. better than fruit with cayenne, baby. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. So let me ask this uh, last question uh, for myself. What has changed most about your life? What has changed most? I mean, I go where I want. I'm good. It's like uh, uh, everything's... Yeah, everything's like moving very quickly, I guess. And yeah, I, I really do like I get to go to so many places now. Yeah. Besides, you know, just sitting around waiting yeah. to go back to school or back to the house or back to school or back to the house, like the same little cycle. Do you feel pressure now? Feel pressure? Yeah. With I the feel, success of, you know, Old Town Road and No, I feel no pressure. I feel like, you know, it's just the one of the biggest debuts and you know i have so many other areas of the entertainment industry and it's coming music industry to you know put my feet into and uh you know i know what i'm capable of so i know everybody wants me to be like uh what i'm gonna do uh, i'm shaking in my boots or something it's like you know i'm i'm ready Good. So I'm gonna give you one piece of advice, just from me. Yes. As you travel the world, sometimes when you go to a place like you're going across to another country, mm -hmm. make sure they allow you to stay an extra day. Like keep that in the back of your mind, because so many artists, when they're at this level, they travel the world and they're doing shows and they're on and off planes. But they don't see. The and world. they never see the world. Facts. And I then. Feel that. And I want you to see the world. Experience that I, process. Because I think you're at the perfect age, bro, where you could take it all in and see what this world has to offer. And again, a big congratulations from the morning culture Woo! to you. Lil Nas X, everybody. Congrats. Thank bro. you guys Thank you so much. Bye.